Hi, this is part two of my motor control with encoders investigations. Um, the first one, I showed how I found a video and some code online uh, for uh, controlling it with Arduino code and uh, how to use PID and control the motor that way. Um, I, said at the end of that video that I was going to try to port it over to MicroPython and use it on a, a Raspberry Pi Pico uh, board and see if it worked that way. So uh, that's what I did. I got a picture here of my wiring set up. Again, it's a bunch of spaghetti, but uh, uh, just basically you're uh, uh, sending this as the controls for uh, uh, direction in PWM that you're sending to my uh, 10 amp motor control board that I talked about in the last video and um, uh, got input coming from my power supply and then output is going back over here to the pins of the motor and going over you know, motor pins over there. Uh, the other pins coming off here are for the encoders, and you have two encoders uh, plus some supply voltage and ground, of course, and uh, um, you're using two pins to get enco uh, encoder A and encoder B, and we're using interrupts on encoder A to um, uh, interrupt, you know, using interrupts, on, hardware interrupts on the Pico to uh, count the steps or, or the encoder steps that we're going around on our motor and which direction we're going with it. So anyhow, let's uh, go ahead and get this off the thing and show the Thony code for doing it. So uh, we're just getting using pin and PWM from the machine library, time library and math library because we're trying to create a target sine wave target for the motor to follow uh, so i needed the math functions to do that um, these are just uh pins that i'm getting in coder a and coder b or input pins and direction pin and pwm pin or output pins in the pwm i'm running at a frequency of 1000 um, the arduino boards usually use about a i think a 490 uh uh, Hertz uh, PWM, so uh, just figured I'd try a thousand. Didn't make much difference in it. Um, these are our variables. This posi i are just uh, that's the interrupt variable that we're using in our interrupt, and uh, we'll talk about that. Rest of these variables are used in the PID uh, calculations. So we got that. So we'll start off with our encoder function. Here's our posi i. Of course, we got to make it a little global so that we can uh, use it in the function as well as the uh, uh, main part of our program. And again, we're we're getting interrupted on uh, encoder a, so we're reading the value of encoder b, and if b is high, then that mean when when we get interrupted that means that we're going in a forward direction and if uh, encoder b is low that means when it's interrupted it means it's going in a backwards direction or counterclockwise or whatever you want to do it and here's you have to have you def define your function above in python so that's up there um, so we got uh encoder a interrupt and it's a uh, on a rising pin when encoder a goes high it, it, it does that and then it just does this function real quick each time um, so that's that part of it we'll get down to our while true this first one here we're setting our target and that's where i was talking about that over time we're making a sine wave to, to follow um, the rest of this is for figuring out the uh, PID on our thing. Uh, this is doing the timing for it. Um, and then 
this is actually where we have to we're getting our using our posi i and our calculations so well we need to get that from our uh, uh interrupt so we disable interrupts for a bit of time and just read that in from posi i into posi and then we enable the interrupts again you want to keep whatever's in here just as sure as you can so you don't lose interrupts or get behind on your interrupts so um and then got that and then we're just using um this is our p and this is our d and this is our i calculations and then to get your total for your adjustment you're multiplying it this kd kp kd and ki are your constants that you're multiplying each one of your calculations by and you're adding those all up together to get your total uh offset or whatever you want to call it and um then we uh come down here and we're uh getting our our we're calling it power but it's actually your pwm and uh one thing about that is we're getting that's the absolute value and then we're also calculating our direction down here as well but for our for the arduino power is uh or your pwm is zero to 255 so i left that calculation in here because that's what all our p and i and d are calculated on and um the um uh of course the micro python uses us zero to uh 16 bit uh value for that so we have to uh, I'm do, instead of doing multiple poly, I'm just bit shifting it eight bits, and that'll give us a 16-bit uh, value. Uh, so that's how I got that going on. Like I said, down here we're just uh, if uh, u is negative, that means that we're um, uh, going in one direction if u is less than zero then we're going in uh, a negative or a backwards direction if u is positive then we want to go to a forward position and that's our direction pins and um here's another thing on uh, uh arduino i was able to just go around and around and around and uh um the serial monitor kept up with what I was doing um, but uh, uh, in, uh, in micro Python I ended up where the serial monitor couldn't keep up with it so I don't know whether that means that this program's going faster in uh, micro Python which I wouldn't think would be the case or the serial monitor or the shell display is slower than it is in uh, Arduino but either way I ended up having that I tried like one thousandth of a second to sleep and uh, still wouldn't keep up and then uh, one hundredth or ten milliseconds sleep seemed to be uh, uh, what I could keep up with on here uh, because I wanted to be able to print out and uh, uh, display it in the plotter as well um, since everything up here is time based it really doesn't matter how often you do this of course you're going to get more course adjustments if you uh, get this too slow but this seems to be all right by having it at this this adjustment speed and that's what i got 50 lines of code and uh that gets it running so let's get to it i'm gonna turn on my power supply yeah, we're going to run our code. So you can see our numbers up here. We're keeping up pretty close. You can see they're a little different. And you can't do much as far as, or I haven't found out how to zoom in on this or anything. That's why I got it over here a little, uh, slide it over because if we, uh, bring it over it really doesn't make much of a difference I guess either way looks good but 
you're just going between negative 250 and positive 250. That's how many encoder steps, and that's how your, your direction around there. So I got my phone up so we can see it actually running, just going back and forth, just like it did in the Arduino program. So everything's working. And then the lights on the uh, um, board, you can see it's going from one side and then switching over to the other. And you're still getting some of them when they're adjusting over there. So basically everything works about the same as it did on the uh, uh, Arduino. So good to know that we can port this over. I don't know how it would work with multiple motors. I got four motors to control, so I don't know if uh, it could actually control four motors at the same time and catch all the interrupts because there's lots of interrupts coming in for sure. Anyhow, just wanted to show how I was able to port it from Arduino to this one, and uh, we'll see how it goes and whether I decide to use the encoders in my next robot project or just leave it with just the <laughs> basic PWM like I have in the past. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Have a good day, everybody.